Hello and welcome to the second channel for Tales from the Trip. I'm your host, Drip Keeper, and on today's video, we're going to be reading a story about a wife of a porn addict and how it destroyed her. Um, been wanting to do like a porn addiction video for a while now, and um, I know it was. I was trying to find some stories maybe to put together, put in a compilation, but we're just going to read one here tonight. Um, I'm getting kind of tired, it's getting late, but I did want to get a video on this channel, and I figured this one might be a good one to do. Um, I've been trying to work out how to figure out a stream, because uh, me and Vivek are going to be doing something uh, Sunday. Uh, we're going to be doing a stream. We're supposed to do it tomorrow, but... By the time I get everything ready, I, don't, I still don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. So I'm, I'm just, I need more time. And I need more time to create the thumbnail for it, you know, the art for the, the, the podcast. Uh, but yeah, we are going to be streaming. We're going to be doing some shit. So leave in the comments what you want us to talk about. We already got some, some things. I, I already got some things we want to talk about. But hey, we're open to suggestions. So if you're into that, um, it'll probably be on my channel. If not, it'll be on his for sure. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys know when that comes along. So just stay tuned to our Instagram and the community posts that we make because there will probably be something in the next couple days about it. So yes. Um, but all right, this is, uh, this is by, um, apparently this is a very popular Reddit post. I'd never seen it before. Um, just like the coconut one, that one was insane. I don't know if this one's going to be as insane as that one. That one's going to be tough to beat, if I must say so myself. That one is going to be tough to beat. Um, but you know, the utter, the utter depreciation of these posts, I don't know, man, this, this might be worse, but we'll see. It, it, it all goes, it all depends on how you feel about things. You know, something could be worse than the other, like, especially with the urinal cakes. That was interesting. You know, people on there, maybe serious, maybe they weren't. I feel like there was half of the people on there were real and the other half was satirical, but that chemical you could get high off it. That's just what it is. Uh, and maybe not in your own, your own cake if you don't want to choose that or whatever. You know, my eyes are closing right now. I am <laughs> pretty fucking tired. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. But um, I'm just saying, you know, it's possible out there to get high off that shit. You know, and it's, um, you just got to be careful because um, people are doing mothballs too. Hell no. Do not. I don't know how people are doing mothballs because that is just... I, I do not like the smell at all. I got it on my hands, and I just, I smelled it the whole time. I was washing my hands. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, get out of my fucking hands. And it was, just wasn't, you know. Um, but, yeah, we don't have any Miller High Life, so I'm saving them for tomorrow um, because I only have two left. So, and I didn't buy them at the store after work, so. But we do have an energy drink. I'm trying to wake up a little bit. I do not want to take a hydroxyzine. I still got to do that video. I was planning to do it, but I'm just like, I don't really have enough to say about it that I can make a video from it. So maybe I'll just like, I don't know. Maybe you want me to do it now? I mean, you can't answer. I'm the one talking in here. Um, but for a quick summary, I basically was a zombie for two fucking days. Did not, I, I just wanted to sleep the whole time. I didn't even remember working the next day. I took two pills maybe three two or three pills um two on the night before and then i think i took one at work the next day um and dude every time i closed my eyes there'd be this like sonic boom triangle and it would show up and um it was cool at some parts but i was just so tired and it was just so annoying how tired i was and when i got home from work i fell asleep on my couch just sitting there uh, i was just I just did not feel like a human being. It was it was horrible. Um, so I'm gonna save them though, because I got them prescribed to me for anxiety, and clearly um, it does keep you not anxious because you'll be too fucking tired to be anxious. But I don't know. I saw it a panic attack the next day, which I've been having more recently. Um, but it was because this one fucking co-worker I have, she started talking to me about flat earth and how NASA lies. And I just, I, my eyes were just like rolling the back of my head from how hard they were rolling. I, I just could not believe what she was saying. She just reads to the, the oldest, oldest thing of the Bible. Like, dude, they updated it. You know, read that. It's don't, do not believe fucking flat earth. Have you been on a plane? I have not been on a plane, but I'll tell you what, I know that the earth is round. All right. Earth is not flat. Whatever the reason you believe it for, whether it's religion or you're just stupid or you're both, um, 
don't be trying to put that shit on anyone else because that is just not right. Um, it's very, it's very sickening. Um, I don't think if you believe in that, I don't think you should be spreading your your fucking lies and rumors to people because then people might believe you and uh, it's not a good, not a good thing. But um, yeah, so that that gave me. I wouldn't say it gave me a panic attack, but it gave me an anxiety. Like, I started shaking really bad because I was like, I wanted her to walk away, and I just kept ignoring her. But, yeah. So that happened, and then, yeah, I was just tired the whole day. Didn't really, really remember anything at work, and I uh, got very tired, and that's really it. I was just tired and a zombie, and I did not know what the hell I was doing. Uh, so that that's the hydroxazine. You guys got it now. We went um, almost six minutes into that, so I'll probably put something on the screen to say when the actual video starts. Um, but, yeah. All right, let's get this started. Um, I am the wife of a porn addict, and it destroyed me. Um... Now this was in this is in the best of redditor updates so this person copied their story um and put it in here so this is not like the actual person who did it but I mean it's what they wrote you know but they're just copying it into it into something together cuz there's like two parts I believe so um, there are trigger warnings, uh, severe addiction, severe depression and self-harm, mood spoiler, bleak and depressing. All right, so let's get started here. Porn is not some innocent pastime. Porn isn't something that doesn't hurt those we love. Porn is destructive to yourself and to those that love you. I used to be confident, self-assured, had pride in myself, and loved myself. Now, nearly six years later, I'm a shell of the person I used to be because of my husband's porn addiction. Uh, I watched year after year my husband ogle other women right in front of me, literally fantasizing about fucking these women while sitting right next to me holding my hand. I learned how time after time my husband preferred to sit in some dirty, nasty public bathroom for God only knows how long, watching God only knows what, and jerking off to the point of injury instead of coming home and making love to his willing and waiting wife. I now know that during our lovemaking, all my husband thinks about our nameless women and is fucking them in his head and just using and just using my body as a means of doing this. There's more, so much more, but it hurts too much to talk about it. I had caught him a few times. He rationalized his behavior, promised to stop, and told me he had for years. Now I found out it's never stopped, not once. Well, I gotta say right off the bat, poor woman, poor woman. He's been lying to me for years, and now finally, when he's literally destroyed the person who loved him more than life itself, he is ready to change. Why did his recovery have to come at my expense? Why did his willingness to finally get help and admit to what he's been doing to me all these years have to happen when I've reached rock bottom? And now I'm supposed to continue to support him to make it easier for him so he doesn't relapse, be kind and sweet and not talk about it with him so that he can continue to succeed? While I watch him take quick peeks at bikini girls on TV, or quick glances at young girls in tight yoga pants at the store. Oh boy. I'm supposed to make it easier for him, while I no longer want to live, when I don't want to sleep, when I don't sleep, when I hurt myself to make the... To, when, I, when I hurt myself to take away the inner pain my husband's addiction has caused me. So, for those of you that think this is harmless, you are dead wrong. If you think that by hiding it, it makes it okay, you are wrong. I would never have married him had I know he had any addiction, drugs, alcohol, gambling, or sex. I had the right to know about it. I had the right to know what I was marrying into, to make that decision for myself if I could accept it. But that choice was taken away from me. For the sake of your loved ones, be honest from the beginning. Don't take away their right to decide, because for me, at this point, it's a matter of my own life or death if I stay. Alright, so that was from 2021. There is, uh, there's an update here, 2022. Um, so I must go more in depth with it. We'll see what the hell happens. Because that was, you know, that was okay, I guess. Um, sad, but not in depth too much, so we'll see. Um... It's been just over two years since I first learned of my husband's addiction. It's hard to read my initial post. Man, was I in a deep, dark hole. That hole only grew, too, and I, and I saw some pretty dark times in the months to come. For those who offered kind words, sympathy, offered advice, and reached out, thank you. 
For those of you who did the opposite, all I can say is, I hope and I pray that you never have to experience what I have the last two years. Over the last two years, I have been dealt many disclosures and admissions, each one worse than the last. What I thought was a pornography and masturbation addiction turned out to be far worse. I can say this has been the most humbling experience, and I've learned that unless you are in someone's place, you really have no idea of what you would do, regardless of what you think you would do. It's also been humiliating, degrading, tormenting, and isolating in ways that are unimaginable. Some will say I am weak for staying as long as I have, but they are wrong. It takes great strength to wake up every day and face the same demons, and determination and grit to slay them every single day. Some days I wanted to die, other days I wanted to run. Yet, every day I chose to keep fighting until I no longer felt like dying or running. For those of you who are struggling with this addiction, if there's anything I hope to gain out of all we've been through, all I have endured, it is this. Pornography is a drug, and a powerful one at that. It lures you in with the promise of pleasure and excitement, and when it's done with you, then what? You are all alone. Sitting in a dark room with nothing but the lights of a computer screen as a companion, alone. Standing in a bathroom with your phone in your hand as your lover, alone. Laid back on your sofa, staring at a frozen television screen after your video has ended, alone. Then the shame comes, the shame of once again giving into this temptation. The shame that you couldn't stop yourself yet again. The shame of your secret and that you chose fantasy over your partner. The, the one person who's there every day to support you, to love you, to live a life with. Yet you, see, yet you seek sexual release behind his or her back, knowing they deserve better, knowing this is wrong. But it doesn't end there, no. Pornography is not done with you yet. Erectile dysfunction. Viewing pornography, viewing pornography that is progressively hardcore, a material you never dreamed you would view, or worst case scenario, illegal pornography. And I'll promise you, it will happen. Like any drug, you build a tolerance. Then, when fantasy isn't enough, you physically start acting out. Cheating, public masturbation, stalking, window peeping, the list goes on. Will porn be there to keep you warm at night? Will porn wrap its comforting arms around you when you are grieving a loss? Will porn give you a family to fill your home with warm memories? Will porn build a life with you? Or would you rather look back and think about all the times you masturbated while your wife slept? Or how you'd rather miss your kid's school concert as you can have time alone to get off? You are the one missing out. This isn't a life. You are at the mercy of pornography, and the price you pay for is far more than you realize. You aren't just hurting yourself, you're hurting those who say you love, who, those you say you love. I can promise you, your partner isn't going to be angry. They're, they are going to be hurt that you would rather turn to fantasy than to them, and they deserve better. You deserve better. For anyone who is interested in knowing, I'm alive and well, although if I were honest, I didn't know if I would be. My husband's addiction had many layers, has many layers, and everything that was safe to me had been violated in one way or another, and I no longer had safety. I had nowhere to go, no one to talk to, because if anyone knew what my life was, I would be ostracized. My kids would have been ostracized. I had far more to lose than just a marriage. After feeling about as low as anyone could, I decided to have cosmetic surgery. For me, and I feel amazing about myself again, I also went back to school to get my master's degree with the plan to specialize in sexual addictions. I'm, a, I'm one and a half years in with one and a half years left, all A's thus far. Maybe I'll open my own practice, maybe I'll move, who knows. What I do know is that I'm not limited. Do I still have days that are rough? Absolutely, but I fight every damn day, I fight back. I love myself, I love who I have become, and I have had to pay dearly for the person I am today. My last disclosure was five months ago, when I learned my husband was using his job to get entrance into women's homes, into women's homes and use their personal items for his pleasure. My advice to anyone, get cameras installed. He also went window peeping on the night of my birthday six months ago. The next month, my husband entered treatment. 
Am I still married? Yes, but with very strong boundaries. I made him disclose his actions to his employer. He is no longer allowed to work alone, period. I have a tracking app so that I can make sure he's not frequenting public places to act out. He has an app that monitors his screen activity so that he cannot access pornography. He does not use credit cards so that he cannot purchase anything without me knowing. These were the conditions I made clear to him if we, if we were to stay married, or he could leave me at any time. He chose to stay. After inpatient treatment a thousand miles away and $25,000 later, he recognizes now how ill he was and he will always be an addict and he never wants to go back to that place again. He is willing to do what he, he is willing to do what he knows he needs to do to stop that from happening. His little self-control and he has told me and his therapist that I saved his life and he's forever grateful that even with the boundaries, I stood by him and I fought for something far greater than just our marriage. Are the boundaries too much? Maybe, but he's welcome to leave any time. I'm not concerned with pr protecting the addict, but I will protect him, myself, and society to the best of my abilities. To conclude this post, I would like to say that pornography is not what you think it is. Many of these people in pornography are victims of sex trafficking, childhood sexual abuse, prostitution, and forced into this life with drugs, manipulation, abuse, fear tactics, and many others. It is a business that supports the continuation of all these things, and I encourage you to please check out, uh, check out the Fight the New Drug site, link below. If you are not part of the solution to combat this, then you are part of the problem. And as long as you support pornography, you are supporting the continuation of abuse of thousands of children, women, and men. Good luck to all, and I wish you the best in this powerful struggle. Um, sounds like it's good that he got treatment. Um, yeah, that, uh, I don't know about that woman she's happy still with him um you know i mean it's good that he got treatment and everything but here's here's a couple comments none of this ex exudes ex exudes strength my eyes rolled so far so far into the back of my head when she called herself strong for enabling a man who clearly is a danger to people around him uh yeah that's true um let's see here oh boy there's a lot of comments on here uh, she has a messiah complex and is a complete narcissist. She's getting off and fixing him and saving everyone, making him confess to his employer and such, having him repent. She knew he was a registered sex offender before she even married him, then brought her child into the home. Crazy how she never mentioned anything about this. Her husband doesn't have a porn addiction. He's a goddamn sexual predator, and she knew that from the beginning. Also, what does her getting plastic surgery have to do with anything? Yeah... Um, yeah, the husband is, uh, you know, I don't know, man, that's fucked up. I, I hope this person is not around us, you know, just having these dangerous people. I like to see what these people look like. And yeah, they having the kid part. I mean, what the hell are you having a kid around this person for? Like, dude, are you stupid? I think this woman is very stupid. Um... <laughs> You gotta love the the fiend ignorance of OP stating that she wished she knew this before marrying the dude when it's obvious that she did in fact know. Hold up, she knew and what? Thought she would change his life, fix him? She brought a sex offender into her home and surprised when he sexually offends. What kind of BS? Uh, yeah, so there's other posts. Okay, um, God, I don't know if I should read those then. Where can I find these oh I could just go on the original post okay um, hmm. let's see what else they said uh, posts my moment of epiphany removed bruh it says bruh I'm speechless um, I didn't get to see it. Wow, the comments. You are making everything worse for yourself. Just leave. Um, I'm not even 18 yet, and I know better. 
I hope that was sarcastic. Please seek therapy. You need to leave him and find someone healthy to be fulfilled with. Don't entertain a sociopathic clown. He is devoid of empathy. Just cut your losses. I really wish I could read what that was. All right, so there. I guess there's one. Ah, oh, come on, dude. There's no post now. I'm kind of pissed. I want to see what they have to say. That's crazy. Let me put it this way. You can't change him, plain and simple. You can't change him no matter how much you love him. I'm not saying that you're not good enough or that you don't truly love him enough. I'm saying nobody can change him but but he himself. Sure, you can try if you really wish, but don't be surprised if you find yourself feeling like you're the only one holding up your end of the relationship while he goes off and wanders. Your unwillingness to have sex with him is telling, is telling you, tell yourself you love him, but do you really? In your early 40s, ED might be understandable. Hey, I'm there myself, taken, but I'm there. But combined with his inability to orgasm, that's showing signs of PIED and death grip syndrome. I'm no medical doctor, but I've been around this sub long enough to sense that he's got some serious issues. Not to mention, he could actually pose a real clear and present danger to your children, considering his past, and the fact that he doesn't seem to have uh, have done much to counter it, especially at a critical age. As a parent, I'd be a bit more than concerned. Um, well, she posted something, to, a comment. All good points. I was under the pretense that this was in the past, long in the pa past, and people make mistakes, some worse than others, but it's not what we've done that defines us, but how we move forward and better ourselves, which I was told. After many deep conversations, he had learned from it, held a sobriety in the highest standard, and never wanted to look back. I found this character more valuable than past mistakes, but yes, that is on me for believing his lies. We also live in a society where we are told it's men being men, and not to be so uptight about natural normal male behavior, porn and masturbation. But I should never have allowed my own values and morals to be corrupted, at least not more than once, which I'm sure contributed to the relapses. That turned out to never even be relapses since he never even stopped. And we are still intimate. I'm. Uh, and we are still intimate. I'm not, nor would I ever withhold sex as a punishment. And I'd rather have sex with the man I married as opposed to anyone else or myself, which is another reason that it makes it so much harder for me to understand. Thank you all for your input. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I could find fucking... What the hell? Damn, that sucks. So, you can't even can't even find the original post it, it had to be something crazy dude it, it had to be i'm now i feel disappointed for you people who are wanting to listen to this but um i'm gonna leave this in the description box um because people are talking about this from so it had to be up at least last year or like whenever this post came out um but yeah she's um yeah it just seems like you're blaming porn for everything you know porn is not good for you at all but um yeah so but but to use that as an excuse as these people are saying bringing up you know facts you know I, I wish i could have seen the other post because i'm just going off what she said you know so just seeing all these people comment seeing the other posts that she had you know now now i feel like i need to like you know dig deeper into this but um apparently the daughter that lives there is 15 years old um yeah, that's just, that's terrible. You can't imagine what, what that husband's trying to do. This poor kid, even if the guy never attempts to assault her, she's going to sleep with one eye open until she's 18 and can flee. Yeah. Or they're already doing things and she hasn't said it. She hasn't said anything. Wouldn't surprise me if they kept that a secret. All right, this did turn really fucked up, actually. Um, just trying to find some more comments here and see if... Um, 100% sure this dude is watching child porn and she still decided to stay. Yeah. Yep, the young girls in yoga pants really sealed this. It was the, we can't have pool parties for my teenage daughter because of all the ogling. I feel dirty just typing that. Yeah. Um, when you're reading it, you're just, I'm tired as I am, you know, picking up on this. I was just like, all right, reading it, just like, I want to get this get this read but yeah just going over it with these these commenters here makes you realize how messed up it is but yeah that's uh dude is this is there a way back machine for this i'm gonna see because the epiphany post that's apparently something that's uh very there's a lot of information in that uh let me see if i can find it i'm gonna go in the way back machine 
do 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 do. You always gotta keep talking. Aw. Can't find it. Uh, let me see if I copy the my moment of epiphany. It could be in like an old Reddit thing. Let's see here. No. Reddit. No fap. Um. Oh God. Yeah, I can't. Damn. That sucks. That really sucks. I want to know what the hell it said. Fucking cocksuckers. Why didn't that shit work? Oh my god, bruh. I'm angry now. I had nine upvotes, eight comments. Dude, bruh, I'm speechless. The fact that two people said they're speechless. Uh. God. I'm gonna pause this audio really quick. I'm gonna try to find it so I don't have to like keep you waiting. Okay, guys, I found it. We are in the Wayback Machine, and someone captured it in 2021. Thank you so much. So I had to go on a different Wayback Machine website. This is the one I was used to. I didn't know what the hell, because I was on the Internet Arch. Okay, that's why I was on the Internet Archive. But um, So we have it. We have it right here. Uh, holy shit. I'm excited to read this, just as probably you guys are. I made you wait that long. Hopefully, it's worth the wait. My Moment of Epiphany. Good morning, Reddit peeps. I want to thank you all for your support, words of encouragement, suggestions, ideas, even the harsh ones. I've taken them all into advisement, and after a deep conversation with my PASA hubby, I had an amazing and very eye-opening realization. I am... I am the reason for my husband's need to watch porn, ogle woman, and seek that excitement outside of our marriage. Oh boy, this is, yeah, okay. I get that it started before me, but I think being married to, okay, so that's where it comes from. I, th I get that it started before me, and then she posted that. Okay, see, now what are you saying? Now we're putting the shit together. Now that these posts, you know, she took it down, or Reddit took it down, or whatever, we won't get to know that. So I was just reading what she wrote in the first story, the second update, you know. Uh, so yeah, now we're getting, this is like the real shit right here. I get that it started before me, but I think being married to me worsened his need because, well, sim put simply and honestly, I've never, nor will I ever be good enough to meet my husband's sexual needs. Even after spending over 20000 on cosmetic surgery, foolishly I know, trying to be that woman of my husband's dreams, I still have failed him as a wife, and it's no wonder that he prefers all those beautiful and sexy women over me, even if they aren't real, and to masturbate instead of coming home to me. I feel sorry for my husband that he's had to pretend to want me, that he's had to tolerate having sex with me, and I completely understand why he had to imagine other women while doing it. It's unfortunate that it took me this long to figure it out since I wasted valuable time, but now that I have, I am on a mission. I've decided that I'm going to help him find that one special woman, that one woman that finally fulfills all of his desires. I'm no longer going to force him into any intimacy with me as I know that I'm not even close to what he wants and the days of him having to pretend are all over for him, much to his relief I'm sure. He doesn't like seeing me unclothed, lol. The poor guy has been repulsed by me for years and it's selfish of me to expect him to not, to not, not to seek other means of release. I know that he's expressed some interest in a couple of my close friends, one in particular, and she needs to re reciprocate his attentions. Boy, that was an awkward moment for me, haha, -ha. I feel I felt like the third wheel around the two of them, so I have a place to start. After, I'm, after I find him this new beautiful, this new wonderful woman, I'm going to leave. It's better for everyone, I think, if I'm not here, and maybe, just maybe, my husband can have a peaceful and satisfying life. I know this is an unusual circumstance, as most of the married men here love their wives, desire their wives, and these wives are valuable and worthy of that. Keep up the good work in giving them that. Together, you can beat this. And I'm hoping that my husband will be able to as well, with a woman who deserves all those things, and that the two of them can live a long, happy, fulfilling life together. This will be my last Reddit post. The third one's a charm, but I wanted you all to know how much you've helped, and thanks to you, I'll be able to give my husband this one final gift. Take care, everyone. Stay strong. I wish you all the best. Okay, yeah, psycho. Psycho, psycho people. Um, wow. What do you guys have to think about that? That is just something else. Um, so yeah, definitely an enabler. Um, 
twenty thousand dollar cosmetic surgery. So she probably got some tits or probably face maybe, but I don't know. Like getting getting surgery for your tits is not a good idea unless it's unless it's a uh, a good place you can go to because if if they look bad oh man that just ruins everything about them you know you got to stick with the all natural even if they're tiny no one cares not a, a man does not care at all it, it, or even even none you know it's just it's all about you as a person you know the, fixing it making it look terrible by adding implants and shit that just don't look good you it, it just it's not good so i'm just letting you guys know that if anyone was ever interested in getting a boob job or whatever if you're gonna get one you gotta spend top dollar for it or else it's not gonna look nice so just keep that in mind but um yeah no i'm not gonna stop you from doing it. you could do whatever you want you know i'm just i'm just that's my personal opinion but um yeah so that was uh that was a porn addiction story full three parts i went one two or one three two so um yeah that was intense and i hope this person is just not around kids and i hope he's not around women he's probably like a greasy greasy old man uh not old but he's like 40 something in that post uh so that's not old but he probably looks old uh but yeah that's that's scary to be around I mean, who know maybe he's maybe he's close to you maybe maybe he's around your corner and he can be he can be watching you from the window that'll keep you up at night just imagine you're 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 going to sleep and you just see a guy peeping through like oh my god that's that's fucking terrifying 